I can't wait to show you a very special card from Professor Cedar's personal collection. Each and every card is going to get de-sleeved and then re-sleeved. Circle Diamond Star. This one is quite damaged. The new rarity symbol. Our ultra rares are more like what we used I, to call. Actually, let me rummage. I'll show you the difference between the old ones and the new ones. It has Strafe and Shadow Bullet and Dark Call GX. Still 200 HP, still Strafe, still Shadow Bullet, and still Dark Call GX. Not the most powerful Pokemon. Ed, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. What did I see there? And then I'm gonna show you the first secret rare. Greetings, Pokemon Masters. I'm Professor Cedar, your guide on this incredible journey through the world of Pokemon. Ready to evolve your knowledge and embark on an adventure filled with mysteries and wonder? Every episode will hatch new discoveries, share unbelievable tales, and maybe even encounter a few legendary Pokemon along the way. But remember trainers, while we dive deep into the heart of the Pokemon world, our adventures and discussions about card values, strategies, and other Pokemon phenomenon are based on opinion and meant strictly for entertainment. These are not those of the Pokemon Company or any of their subsidiaries. It's always best for you to do your own research on these topics. Useful links will always be provided in the video description to help guide you on your journey. If you find our content helpful, entertaining, or informative, don't forget to like Subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with our regularly posted content. If you want to make suggestions for upcoming videos or provide feedback on how the videos or the channel can improve, leave a comment. Now with all that out of the way, let's leap into the unknown and uncover the secrets of the Pokemon world together. Pokemon Masters! Welcome to another amazing episode where I get to hang out with you and talk all about our favorite hobby, Pokemon, the trading card game, and the Pokemon world. Uh, I'm Professor Cedar. Nice to meet you. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos, there is some information in this video that has prerequisites. You're welcome to hang around or just click the channel button and watch those videos too. Uh, I'd be so happy to, to catch you. But for those of you returning, uh, something special I'd like to point out. If you haven't noticed, I've got my new lab coat. Pretty happy about it. So <laughs> thanks for your support. And I'm so happy to be wearing my new Professor Regalia. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the rarities. All right. So what are the rarities of Pokemon cards? Um... What is the difference between subjective and objective rarity? Um, maybe some terms that I just go by. But anyways, I can't wait to dive in, dig deep, and talk all about the rarities of Pokemon cards. I've got some special editing that I'm going to be doing in this video to give you guys a closer look at some Pokemon cards. So I hope you stay through to the very end. And for those of you who do stay through to the very end, I can't wait to show you a very special card from Professor Cedar's personal collection. Uh, it is what's known as the first ever secret rare. So if you're curious to find out what was the first ever secret rare card ever printed, stick around to the end. All right, so let's dive into it and talk about the rarities. All right, so first of all, the Pokemon Company themselves have put out an article talking about what they're calling, I suppose, the new rarity symbols. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm very happy about it because prior we just had our common, uncommon, rare, and then we kind of coined up together as a community the terms like ultra rare, full art, secret rare, rainbow rare, or hyper rare, etc. Whereas now we get a little more guidelines on how the Pokemon Company sees and titles their various versions of rarity. Although we do want to still pay homage and also use our former terms 
to be a little more specific about some things. So uh, let's dive straight into it. We've got our common, uncommon, and rare. If you see in our previous videos, we talk all about those. Circle Diamond Star, uh, and those all um, also have the reverse hollow and hollow variations. So check those out. Okay, we're gonna get straight into all the rarities here. So I'm so excited to do this and uh, bear with me as I work with learning about video editing and the magic of different camera angles. So we'll try this out. Uh, I hope you enjoy what I'm doing here. Uh, and there's something else I wanted to talk about in this case, especially since I'm working with the lighting here. I will have to be de-sleeving and re-sleeving each card. And that's actually a great opportunity for me to introduce uh, some basics to card care while we do this. Uh, of course, I find that all the topics of Pokemon card collecting, actually all card collecting, not just Pokemon, uh, all sorts of cards, um, all the different topics that I talk about in Mastering the Cards, uh, sort of overlap and intertwine. So even though I'll probably do a full episode on card care, you're just gonna get some riddled in here and there throughout many of the different episodes. All right, and this is one of those cases. So uh, we're gonna go straight into it and basically each and every card is gonna get de-sleeved and then re-sleeved. All right, so first of all, when we're taking off a sleeve on a Pokemon card, remember, your Pokemon card is more valuable than the sleeve. A sleeve, uh, well, in the case of these perfect fit sleeves, uh, I get them for about $7 Canadian a pack. I'm sure you could get them cheaper. I'm sure you can get them more expensive. These are just the price I pay for them. Um, but anyways, um, for a hundred sleeves at $7 a pack, that's seven cents a sleeve. Uh, I'd rather damage a seven cent sleeve than this uh, shadowless base set Pikachu with the red cheeks that's worth uh, closer to... Uh, I'm not sure what it's worth right now, but definitely it's worth more than seven cents. So um, that's why I always tell people, damage the sleeves, not the card. So the way I do this is I lightly pinch on the card. Just lightly though, we don't want to put too much pressure because when we're sliding the card out, uh, we don't want the plastic or any debris to cause any major surface scratches on the card. And as you see here, I'm kind of pushing down on the sleeve to push the card out. Uh, again, I would rather damage the sleeve than the card. All right. And then now this sleeve has been damaged, so I will never reuse it. This is now considered waste, uh, unfortunately. Um, so that is that and then i will just grab a new sleeve when i'm done with this card and put it back on uh again this is a perfect fit sleeve so it should fit perfectly on the card all right so this is my new sleeve but first i'm going to talk about this pikachu this one is quite damaged but it's super special to me it was professor cedar's first pikachu growing up uh so um this card it is vintage, which I do classify as a different rarity altogether. However, for the purposes of this video, um, we're going to look at this card as a baseline for all rarities. All right. So whether it was vintage or the current types of rarities, we have our common, uncommon and rares, and they all feature basically the same things we see here, which is a picture frame and a Pokemon within the picture frame. And then the name of the Pokemon, the HP at the top, and a clear reading area uh, for the Pokemon's attacks, retreats, etc. So that's that. Uh, common, uncommon, and rare. Um, nothing too spectacular other than uh, the amazing Pikachu and the artwork within the picture frame. But again, quite basic. Uh, and that's just the beginning. So, uh, again, uh, we're gonna re-sleeve, and if you notice, even though this one's quite damaged, I do treat all cards with respect, and something I always say, people who come across me, um, either in public or at my shop, is that, uh, you can't control the condition 
that you get your cards in, but you can control that they stay in the condition they were received in. So always treat your cards with respect and with care. So how I go about re-sleeving, especially when we're using the perfect fit sleeves rather than penny sleeves, uh, whether it's a penny sleeve or a perfect fit sleeve, sliding on your sleeve is a little bit risky. So I am posing this risk on all these cards I'm gonna be showing you today. But in this case, uh, I'm taking that risk. Plus I have a bit of experience. So I do recommend if you get some perfect fit sleeves, practice using them on some of your commons, uncommons and rares before starting to perfect fit sleeve your higher end, more valuable collectibles there. All right, so first I pinch and make an S and then I get one corner in and then I loosely just get it on. And that's the risky part because if any of the plastic catches on the edge of the card, uh, you could just cause some extra edge wear that you might not want on the card. So uh, our damaged Pikachu is now resleeved. Again, with our common, uncommon and rare, that's the typical format. I'm gonna show you a couple more uh, rares here. So first we're gonna go into reverse hollow. Um, so with reverse hollow, we have the same format as the Pikachu as I showed. There's a picture frame. There is a Pokemon within the picture frame and then just plain area for the text to be around. Um, the reverse hollow, it has the hollow foil outside and around the picture frame. That's why it's a reverse hollow. And when you see the hollow, you'll you'll fully understand what the difference is between reverse hollow and hollow. All right. Um, so that's that. We'll get a brand new sleeve on that one. All right. There we go. We got our reverse hollow. And now, as you can see, again, we're damaging the the sleeve, not the card. All right. And now we have our hollow. Our hollow is holographic inside of the picture frame. Notice the quality of the print that Pokemon likes to, I'd say, show off their technology. Uh, the Pokemon itself is not hollow. It's literally the background. Sometimes it's the eyes or accents, but they really, really get into the detail. Uh, quite beautiful. Um, so that would be our hollow. So hollow. It's hollow inside of the picture frame. Reverse hollow, it's hollow outside of the picture frame. We're gonna get our brand new sleeve once more. Just make sure, again, we're holding the edges. We never place our fingerprints on the card. You'll notice me do sometimes put our fingers on the card, but that would be, if you ever notice me, it's after the sleeve is on. Now I'm comfortable putting my fingers on the card and holding it more naturally and comfortable. All right, next up, we've got our, what's the new rarity symbol? Double rare. These are pretty nice. Uh, they're what we used to call an ultra rare. So that has been a modification. I can't wait to show you those. Double rares, what I'm showing you right now, um, as someone who's been in the hobby for a long time, we used to call these ultra rares, all right? So <laughs> I'll get more into that in a bit. These two double rares came from my standard Pokemon deck. So these are out of their home for a brief moment uh, for the purposes of this lesson. So there's one double rare. All right. All right. So there we go another double rare. So as you can see, the notab notab notable features on the double rares is that the Pokemon extends a little bit past the picture frame, sort of popping out, uh, a little bit of a fancier border. Uh, usually in most cases of these double rares, uh, it'll have a name of a Pokemon and then a few extra letters like EX, um, Another feature about them is probably the significantly higher amount of HP and also something called a rule box, all right? So the rule box is featured at the bottom and in the case of these two, it's called Pokemon EX rule. Uh, so that is specifically for the actual playing of the card game. But in most cases, 
anything below the double rare won't have a rule box. Uh, there may be a few odd exceptions. Okay, come on back and here we go. Next, our new ultra rares. So in the past, we used to call these more like full arts, uh, whereas now they are with the double silver stars, ultra rare, all right? So take a closer look. And now on to our ultra rares. Uh, and again, just in the past, we used to call our double rares the ultra rares. But now with the new system, our ultra rares are more like what we used to call full arts. So here's one of our ultra rares. This is a Terra Gyarados EX. And unlike the double rare Gyarados EX, uh, this one has a glistening white background uh, and I'll show you another example of a double rare. And here's the comparison of the double rare versus the ultra rare of the Terra type Gyarados. Alright, so one more double rare here for you guys. In this case, it's a trainer. So again, I'm damaging the sleeve, not the card. And here you have it. So we have our double rare penny, all right? And this one, I'm gonna actually leave out of the sleeve for a moment as we transition into our golden symbols. I did not have a golden marker, so I've just drawn out the stars, but we've got our one golden star, which is our illustration rares. Uh, let's take a closer look at those. So illustration rares, these are like full arts or illustration rares and typically of a card that's not a rule box Pokemon. So it would be an upgrade from our commons or uncommons or regular rares, except uh, they've got the golden star. Uh, again, in the past, we used to just call these full arts uh, and I'll also show you an example of a full art. Uh, I've, I've got one set aside for you guys of an older one uh, and it, was older in a way that they've even completely upgraded and revamped the style so i'll show you those uh in a bit how was that did you really like how we are starting to get more immersed into the pokemon world by seeing the pokemon in its environment i really like what they're doing with the illustration rares uh and on that note next up we have our special illustration rares those have the two golden stars and they're just that touch more illustrious of the illustration rares. Uh, take a closer look at those as well. So here's our special illustration rare. And if we hold our double rare next to our special illustration rare, you'll see the double rare more like how we classically used to look at our full arts, didn't really feature a setting or a specific place. It just had the character fully on the card with a neutral background, whereas the special illustration rare really shows off an illustrated setting with our character within the setting. So again, I'll have quite a few more examples uh, to show you. But these are a great way to side by side show you that the same card can have multiple rarities and have the same purpose in the card game. So if you're someone who values the cards and don't want to use your more valuable card in the card game where it's going to get shuffled or more likely to get wrecked, you could always use, and in the case of Penny, the uncommon, regular, non-hollow, non-reverse hollow penny or you could use the full art or you could use the special illustrator and uh personally i actually play with some of my most valuable cards and i'll even riffle shuffle and shuffle them through because the way i value my cards is that i value myself enjoying the cards i value seeing them feeling them in the game and so for example i use a, a full art colrus 
uh, in my uh, my expanded Umbreon deck, and I just love it. And that brings me joy, and you know that that gives me the value of that card, right? So you gotta remember, value doesn't always mean money. Value is what it provides for you, either if it's emotionally or um, aesthetically or educationally or financially. So we got to consider everything there. So this is the special illustration rare of Meowskarada. And I believe it's from Paldea Evolved. Yeah. Gorgeous. So I got the special illustration rares uh, from Paldea Evolved of each first partner. And I'll show you the next one. Which is Skeledurge. Look at that beauty. Alright, and then number three. First partner number three, we've got Quackaval. They look so cool side by side. So once I get the sleeve on this one, I'll try my best to hold them side by side uh, for you guys. Uh, I just know that I always get these weird uh, reflections when I try to use the camera. But let's see if I can do this this way. So a nice special illustration set there for you guys. And then now that now that I'm here, uh, if you remember earlier, I was talking about how the different subjects within the trading cards and collectibles kind of overlapping. So if you remember, I was talking about mastering a set. When it came to Paldea Evolved, this is literally all I went for. I may have gone for other things like Iono, the Uncommon, but that was to play with, right? But still, I, I went after it and I, I got a few for myself to be able to put in decks. Right? When it came to collecting, I could have tried to master the set, meaning going from 1 out of 193 all the way to not 193 out of 193 and beyond and try to get every single one. But I actually, uh, for Paldea Evolved, I set the goal of getting these three special illustrators. Uh, I think I got the three of them within a couple months of the set being released, uh, maybe even three months. It was obtainable. It was fun to achieve and I got to move on. And also I didn't feel burdened about it. Um, so I always tell people, take on the challenges that you're willing to, willing to and able to obtain and complete. All right, welcome back. And uh, now uh, on the very top end or the bottom of our list, I suppose, we have our hyper rares. And now when it comes to the hyper rares, in the past, the Hyper Rares used to be the only style of cards that we would see ending up in the Secret Rare category. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Secret Rares right away here. But let's see what we mean when we talk about Hyper Rares. So those are our Hyper Rares. And I'll just show you this Maridon. It's quite amazing. I use the Iron Valiant EX in my deck. Uh, but this Maridon is awesome. I'm still looking for the Hyper Rare Karidon to sit them next to each other. They'll look great in the binder together. Uh, and then here's that Iron Valiant, just so you could get another idea of this. And uh, Another really nice thing about the Iron Valiant, I love how they took the future pattern and incorporated it into the background of the card. Um, so I'll actually, I'll show you what I mean by that. So with this one, it's kind of like an LED style, like blocky pattern there. So if we look at our, um, future Iron Valiant, it has the same similar pattern in that future side of the card where it's that dark blue. So I love that they incorporated that. It's kind of like a glitch board or, uh, or some sort of like matrix style artwork. I love it. It's really cool. 
All right, bringing it back. I've got a bunch more cards to show you and I did want to remind you, I'm going to be showing you guys at the very end of this video, the very first ever secret rare. But before all that, I just want to get into some of the older uh, styles of rarities and different variations such as um, Ace spec cards and Prism Stars and Legends and talk about all that. So before we dive into those various styles of rarities, uh, I just wanted to once again go into collector numbers, all right? So uh, as we see in the bottom of the card, uh, in older cards, it's the bottom right of the card. In the newer cards, it's the bottom left. And it's always a number slash a number. And as you heard me in the previous video, the slash is actually uh, stated as out of or of. So any card that falls within the parameter of a set would be lower than the, the denominator of the set. So it'd be 108 out of 108. It would still be part of the set or 107 of 108 all the way down to 1 of 108. So that's how we read a collector number. And then when we talk about secret rares, secret rares means anything that's above the parameters of the set. And the reason that term was coined up was because back in the day, especially the first ever secret rare, uh, not many people knew that card existed. Uh, the purpose of collecting the set of Pokemon cards was to get one of each card from the set. Uh, so, for example, base set was from 1 all the way to 102 of 102, all right? Um, until a certain card came out and it was a secret card from a certain vintage set. And some people thought they mastered the whole set, but there was a secret rare. So, if I could hold your attention just a little bit longer, I want to show you a bunch of really fancy cards and then... I'm gonna show you the first secret rare. All right, so let's take a closer look at more rarities. So now this is the part of looking at a bunch of cards that um, we actually won't need to keep going back to the whiteboard. Uh, and that's because these are all rarities that are from the past um, and also one-offs and also a bit of bonus history. Um, so, uh, I don't even know where to start here. I have a bunch of cards in front of me. And I guess promos come in a wide variety of cards. I'm only going to show you some of the, uh, some of my favorite promos that I've seen. So, Professor's Research is a very useful card in the card game. And I love that they, once in a while, do promos that look this fancy. So... Uh, the thing about promos is with the collector number, they will always say a few letters, which is the letters uh, indicating the generation. And then they'll say a number, which is the sequence in which the promos were released. So in this case, this professor's research was SWSH, Sword and Shield, uh, 152. All right. Then we have this set of four. This is really awesome. It's a throwback to a vintage thing, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But this is the Greninja V Union. And the Greninja V Union spreads across four cards. They make up a giant Greninja card. Sure, there you go. Pretty cool. All right, so those are some style of promos. Again, uh, just adding to that or rephrasing, uh, most promos are in that format. Other examples are SM followed by some numbers, Sun and Moon. Other examples would be XY from the generation X and Y. Uh, there's even... Um, DP, Diamond and Pearl promos. Uh, so promos typically follow in that format, but I'm actually going to show you a different way that they've done the promos. Uh, this 
here is also a promo. Uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about it though was that it didn't follow the typical um, collector number format which most promos have. In this case it still has the same collector number as its Roaring Skies counterpart. Um, but they also upgraded its art to be more like the hyper rare or secret rares as we used to call them back in the day with the golden touch. Um, so in this case, this one was number 77 out of 108 uh, in the original form, whereas this one is 77A out of 108. And it even has a bright yellow A with a circle indicating it's a promo. So in the odd cases, they will fall outside of the fro uh, outside of the promo um, style of labeling the cards and just do their own unique thing. Uh, Pokemon is well known for their attention to detail and quality, but also breaking the mold every once in a while, which I think we can all respect and we've all come to know and love. Uh, so I will show you the comparison to its counterpart. Here we go, the Roaring Skies Shaven EX. So if we compare that to the promo, they both have setup, the ability, and they both have Sky Return, same card text, different art, both in the full art style. Uh, the Shaman EX that is a promo, it features other Pokemon in the background. It's even got a, it's got the Mega Rayquaza in the background. It's so cool. But anyway, so as you can see, um, they really went all out on that promo. Um, so. Those are our promos. It's time for Color the Pokemon. Remember, if you'd like to submit your artwork, you could always visit me at Bountiful Farmers Market and just bring me your artwork or send it directly through the link down below where you could just submit it directly to my email. But I love seeing new artwork of Pokemon. So let's check it out. This one's from Sienna. Thanks for the artwork! It's a Dragonite! Whoa! Vibrant colors and all the stars are colored in. I love it! Thank you so much! And thank you for coloring that Pokemon! I want to talk about the one-off rarities. These are the types of rarities that uh, they just kind of will throw them in throughout different sets. So we've had things like um, tag teams, etc. I'm sure you've all hit, heard of tag teams. I actually didn't prepare a tag team to show you guys. Uh, leave comments. If this video gets uh, 20 likes, I'll show you guys my favorite tag team I own uh, in the next video. That's right, 20 likes. I hope that's not too much to ask. Uh, but so these are like the variant rarities, which are one offs throughout various sets. All right. So, um, first of all, uh, this here is kind of their earlier attempts at a full art. So this is a bayonet. Uh, we called this full art as well back then. So I guess if we use the current rarity system, we would actually call this one an illustration rare. Um, and not a special illustration rare, just an illustration rare. Um, the other cool thing about these full arts or illustration rares back in the day is they actually had two variant, three different variants of the same full art, which could have been reverse hollow, hollow, or non hollow. So those were a really cool thing to look out for. Keep an eye out, you might find some for yourself. These are sweet. All right, next up. Uh, this one was known as an amazing rare. So this Celebi was an amazing rare. It kind of had that artistic splash across it. Didn't really get into the full art category or ultra rare category, but it is fully textured. Uh, as, as the youngsters call it, scratchy. It is totally fully textured and never scratch your cards, please. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, this, these are sweet. I love the amazing rares. I love what they did with them. Yeah, 
And now we have our radiance. Okay, so our radiance. Uh, radiance are really nice. They do have a rule box. Uh, again, they follow that um, regular art classic kind of approach, but they're just way shinier and they've got the texture, beautiful. But another feature of the Radiance um, is that they are a shiny Pokemon. So if you're not familiar with what shiny Pokemon means, it's similar to the real world um, terminology when we say something is albino. And in the official terms of Pokemon, uh, we would look at the possibility of getting a shiny. And in the most common cases of a Pokemon being shiny, or the most frequent, it would be one in 4,000 of that Pokemon. So let's say we were roaming around the Paldean region and we walk through a field and the field is full of um, Pikachus and we see a bunch of Pikachus and there's 4,000 Pikachus in this one field. One of the Pikachus would be orange instead of yellow. Uh, Pikachu is a harder shiny to spot because of the very minor difference in color. In the case of this Greninja, Greninja is normally blue. This one is black. So, uh, Radiance are uh, shiny. Um, these are also sort of one-offs. Uh, the rules are also you can only have one in your deck. Um, I, I suppose the difference is with the okay i'll just go into it um prism star cards you can only have one of any prism star card so unlike the radiance um where the radiant you could only have one radiant pokemon in your deck with the prism star cards you could only have one prism star card with the same name in your deck so uh and i'll just verify that you can't have more than one Prism card with the same name, yeah. So basically I could have a Prism Star Lusamine and a Prism Star Lance and a Prism Star uh, Necrozma all in the same deck. Um, whereas with the Radiant Greninja, if I choose Radiant Greninja, I can't have the Radiant Alakazam in the deck. So that's a difference in the rule. Uh, the Prism Stars feature that little star in the middle. Uh, these were exclusive to the Sun and Moon era. Um, the Radiance, they tend to make a return every once in a while, whereas the Prism Stars, they they had a brief spotlight uh, in the Sun and Moon era. And a well, well received and super happy um, thing we all got back was, uh, especially for tournament play, a spec cards. A spec cards follow the same rulings as the Radiant Greninja. If you choose one, you can't have the other. You only get one A spec card for the whole deck. And A spec cards uh, are bright, shiny pink like this. The older ones have a different style. Um, I, I think I have one close by. Actually, let me rummage. I'll show you the difference between the old ones and the new ones. Here we go. Here we go. Oof. This is the uh, this is the Umbreon deck, and we run an A spec card in this deck, and it's a computer search. So I will actually pull that one out, and I'll just show you the difference. All right, but they're all A spec. They follow the same ruling. If I have the computer search, I can't have the scoop up. If I run the scoop up. I can't have the Hero's Cape. That's just the way the rules are. Um, I can't make up my mind, so leave me a comment. If you prefer the old style of A-Spec or the new style of the A-Spec, be sure to comment. Let me know what you think, because I can't seem to decide. I really like both styles of the A-Specs. Uh, they just each have their own unique flair and style, and I just really love them. But also, A-Specs have always been known to shake up the meta and the tournament play and really make things interesting. So, 
Ace spec cards. All right, and then next, these ones were very interesting. Also, probably some of my favorite like alternate rarities was the break cards. So break cards are awesome. Uh, they go sideways and they added a unique twist to gameplay as well. They kind of turned your stage three or your stage two into a stage three or your stage one into a stage two and gave it almost the power of an ultra rare. Uh, I run one in my in um, one of my expanded decks. It's Noivern Break, and people always have a blast when they see me um, evolve into Noivern Break. But also, it adds more HP and uh, an extra attack. But it doesn't award extra prize cards, which I think is a powerful play that you can make. So those are the breaks. Let me know what you think of those in the comments. All right, we're starting to get to some of the really cool stuff. Um, but again, I, I really want to I want to emphasize we're getting to something amazing at the tail end of this video. So bear with me. Um, I just want to really quickly outline my favorite Pokemon and run it through the rarities. Again, when I talk about these rarities of this specific card, I'm going to use the old terms. Uh, and then I'll probably compare it to the new term. So just we so we get a good example of each of these. All right. So first off, we have a promo Umbreon GX. All right. So promo Umbreon GX. It has Strafe and Shadow Bullet and Dark Call GX. All right. It also has 200 HP. All right. Uh, this one was the promo SM36. Then we have our Umbreon GX from the booster pack. So this one was 80 out of 149. 80 out of 149. Still 200 HP, still Strafe, still Shadow Bullet, and still Dark Call GX. Same card, one is from the pack, one is a promo. All right, next we have our other booster pack, Umbreon GX, same set. Yep, uh, Sun and Moon base set, I believe. And this one is 112 out of 149, but still 200 HP, still Strafe, still Shadow Bullet, and still Dark Call GX. Uh, and we used to call this a Full Art. We used to call this an Ultra Rare. We used to call this, we still do, a Promo. Uh, now, would be calling this one the double rare and this one the ultra rare so things have changed just a little bit um i think personally when i look at the older cards i will want to call it what i used to call it when i look at the newer cards cards i will want to call it what we what the pokemon company has declared the the rarities based on the star system so we have our umbreon Ultra Rare and Full Art. And then finally, we have our Secret Rare Umbreon. All right, so uh, I'm not sure if I referred to Secret Rare yet. Uh, I did talk of, oh yeah, I did talk about it a little bit earlier where I talked about the Hyper Rares, everything being a Secret Rare nowadays. Uh, back in the day, Secret Rares were far more secret uh, and there would only be, like, for example, this one. This one is 154 out of 149. I would only assume that it would go a little bit past that, maybe 10 to 20 secret rares. But as we get even older in the timeline of Pokemon cards, uh, there was a particular secret rare, which I will show you at the end of this video, that it was the only secret rare in the set. And it literally blew people's minds, and many people didn't get to master their set because they didn't come across the card and they didn't know it existed and that's why it was called a secret rare so we'll get there stick around and you'll find out what our mystery secret rare card is now uh another another way for me to show you multiple rarities across the same card uh and while i'm at it i may as well stir up some controversy because i'm a goofy professor like that all right, so 
not the most powerful Pokemon? Prove me wrong in the comments. All right, so here we go. Um, we have our, again, these do not have the new rarity symbols. So we're just gonna go based off the old rarities. We have the ultra rare Mewtwo V-Star. All right, so the ultra rare Mewtwo V-Star. This I would classify as slightly higher than ultra rare. It would be in the same level that you see a V-Max uh, or a Take Team GX, uh, something like that. Uh, and again, 20 likes on this video and I'll show you a Take Team in the next video, all right? I'll show you my favorite Take Team I own and possibly a few others. But this would be in that rarity. I would still just call it an ultra rare referring to the older cards. Uh, and then we have two different versions of the secret rares. Typically we associate golden with secret rare. That's been the most common trend when it comes to secret rares. So typically we'll call the golden card secret rares. Um, most of the youngsters these days just say golden cards. Uh, they'll come to my shop and just ask, do you have any goldens? And it's quite understandable. Um, but if you really want to sound like, like a pro and that you know what you're talking about, ask about secret rares or a gold secret rare. Or nowadays we have a clear outline, three stars, hyper rare. All right. Then we have what we know as the rainbow rare secret rare. So once again, all three the same card, all have the same power, usability in the deck. If you're just trying to be competitive and you're on a budget, use this one. These ones are similar in value. If you want to bling out and make your deck super swag delicious, then use these in your deck. I can guarantee you the person with more skill, even if they're using this, will outperform the person with less skill that's using these. All right, so we'll sleeve those up. And now there's only really amazing cards left to show you. Um, I actually feel really proud. Um, first of all, maybe that I own some of these. Um, and each of these has a story um, associated with them so that's also extra special to me um, but also um, this lets me get into that topic of what is objective rarity versus subjective rarity um, these are concepts I personally I didn't do any research talking about this um, or to talk about this it's just something that I really wanted to mention uh, and I, I just want to bring my, what I would believe is a common sense spin on it, right? So for example, we have that list that I'm talking about in front of the whiteboard, which is from common to uncommon to rare, uh, all the way to hyper rare. And that is what I would call our objective rarity. All right. In most cases, um, Pokemon company does a great job making the objective rarity um, accurate uh, and that's amazing so when we see our hyper rares it's one per box where our commons are even up to six seven eight per box uh, and then you know like if you want a specific hyper rare you might have to open a whole case which has six boxes in it and you still might not get that specific hyper rare um, so that is the objective rarity, but now when we go further back or we talk about our vintage cards, just like that first Pikachu I showed you, it's a base set, uh, red cheeks, shadowless Pikachu. Um, what is the, what is the rarity of that? It wouldn't be the objective rarity. Uh, it wouldn't be a common it's actually pretty rare if you go out to your local card store and you just ask them do you have a red cheek pikachu 
uh, they might have it, but it wouldn't be the same price as any of the other commons. So that's where I would start talking about the subject of rarity of the cards, or even of anything. For example, let's say you're traveling to Mexico and you happen to stumble across a, a little mask in the jungle and it's off the beaten path. That could be a very rare thing, but I'll tell you what, there's not going to be a little star on it to tell you that it's rare. Right? Or let's say you have a lamp that was handed down to you from your mom. But that lamp that was handed down to you from your mom was also handed down to your mom from your grandma. And possibly even it was handed to your grandma from your great grandma. And then maybe even from your great gra from your great 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 grandma to your great great grandma to your great grandma to your grandma to your mom to you now. And maybe you're gonna hand it down to your daughter. Alright? What are the odds? What is the subject of rarity of what that lamp is in this world? Like, how common would that thing be, right? So we we can't just place the rarity based on, on the little symbols on the cards. Uh, it's always worth it to dig a little bit deeper for the information to learn more about how many of this particular item exists in the planet and nowadays we have all the resources in the world uh you know uh there's google there's the internet um we're even now in the in the territory of ai where ai can help you do that search so i i just wanted to really get into talking about you know rarity doesn't necessarily mean a symbol on a piece of cardboard there is an actual definition of what rare means and there's even something beyond rare, which is the word unique, which means it's literally one of a kind. And um, there happens to be some possibly myths about unique Pokemon cards. Um, so my challenge to you is type into Google the word Snap Pikachu. That is a recently surfaced card that might be a singular card in the world or maybe only two, right? Um, so there's always things like that. And just keep in mind, um, even if you have a pretty common card that maybe other people have the same card as you, um, but your card was gifted to you from someone who's special to you, now that card is more rare because that card is special to you. So I always like to talk about that, and it's always an opportunity for me to say, never underestimate sentimental value. What is the value you place on a certain item? And that brings me to show you one of the most special cards in my collection. This is not the feature card of the video where I'm going to show you at the end of the video, but uh, this is a way for me to talk about sentimental value. So uh, this card here, it might be really hard for the camera to see it. Um, this one was gifted to me by a customer uh, of my shop. So it's quite special. This one is, um, it's from the legendary collection. Uh, and it is a reverse hollow Eevee. I really hope the camera can focus on this. So with the legendary collection, the hollows are quite difficult to get in a great condition. And this is, uh, this is one of those times where it has been kept in great condition. I would say there's still a few surface scratches, uh, but these are quite special if you find them. Any reverse hollow legendary collection cards, uh, are quite rare so even though this one says common it's one of those ones that you won't find too many of those cards uh so thank you so much for the gift and this is a card i will cherish and keep near and dear to me for a really long time all right and then 
This is these. The next two I'm gonna show you are um, uh, some of the one-off rarities. Uh, however, in the vintage side of things. All right. So uh, first we have um, what I was showing you with the the Greninja V Union. Um, what I wanted to talk about, or what I mentioned, was it was a throwback to something, and that is the Legends cards. So, Legends cards paired up together to look something like this, and they were quite beautiful. These actually came from booster packs, so they were not promos. Um, which I believe made them extra special, but also extra rare. Uh, so this one, if you want to look it up, it's 89 out of 90. And 90 out of 90. So that's the Rayquaza and Deoxy Legend cards. Quite a beautiful set. Uh, these ones, I don't have too much of a story about these. Um, but what I can talk about is persistence. Um, I've only ever wanted two legends that I personally wanted to collect. The Deoxy and Rayquaza, which I found at a local card store. And I actually worked out a grueling, hectic trade. Uh, but I built up the value and built up in-store credit. And then uh, got these for what they were worth. Uh, as... As single cards so uh, it just goes to show when you when you really want something and you locate it it might be worth putting in a bit of elbow grease and and getting in the trade all right and then nextly this one is a great one um, this one's got a really cool story uh, and I'm actually I think I'm risking a lot by pulling it out of the sleeve um, this one is called a Prime card. It's Umbreon Prime. And the funny story about this card is uh, back in the day, uh, around 2016, during the XY era, we had some Heart Gold Soul Silver packs, and they were expensive packs back in the day uh, to have those in the shop. And uh, uh, it was the end of a day of work. I was there with my brother and we had a few customers around and at the start of the day uh, me and my brother agreed we would each open one pack and we could choose the pack and set it aside at the start of the day and we could open it at the end of the day and all day I was showing all the customers the pack that I was gonna open at the end of the day and I was holding the pack around, waving it around, uh, not knowing what's inside, but I was just saying that there was an Umbreon Prime in the pack. And uh, when I opened it, it was literally in the pack, and I literally don't know how that happened. Um, it w well, I do know that it was a coincidence, but um, it, was, uh, it was quite hilarious when I opened it to everyone's uh, surprise that Umbreon Prime was sitting right in that pack for me to open. And uh, quite a special but really fun, funny story. And now uh, I want to go into the history of secret rares. That's right. We're almost there. We're almost at the feature card of the video. All right. So we're going to go into the history of secret rares. And you've already seen a bunch of secret rares this video. Uh, but first, I'm going to show you. What I would like to say was probably closest to the special illustration introduction. So yeah, we had a few secret rares or and few full art cards before this one that were introducing added artwork and and you know um, added styling to the cards. But this one in particular, I would say would be the very first really really special alternate art cards and uh it doesn't have an official name but in the community we know this card as test tube mewtwo so i ended up 
trading this one. I traded for it from someone at my Pokemon League. Uh, they didn't value it as much. I think because when they got it, it was not in the best condition. But to me, I just wanted it to look pretty in the binder anyways. So sometimes I don't really require the cards I own to be in the best condition if it's just going to be a showpiece in the binder. No one's going to see the back of the card anyways. Um, but anyways, this one, Secret Rare, 78 out of 73, Test Tube Mewtwo. Alright, and then, just leave that up. Again, we still treat all our cards with respect, even if they're in lesser condition. We can't control the condition we receive the cards in, but we can control that they stay in that condition. Alright, and then another kind of modern era secret rare, but still um, starting to introduce like having cameo Pokemon appear in the card art of a secret rare. So this is a Mewtwo EX. Uh, and it's, it's one era before the Mewtwo GX. So we had some cameo Pokemon in there, but it's still of the full art style where it's a monocolor background featuring some gold. It's quite pretty. I do love the card. Plus Haxorus, I think it's one of my favorite um, dragon types there. One of, of course, I'll always have a special spot for Noivern, but Haxorus is cool. I love the story arc too with Iris, so it's it's quite a nice card. All right, and then um, now getting into the much older style of Secret Rares. This is where I believe that, or I hope that um, more people would agree this was a very special part of Secret Rares, was that they were so few and far between, and there wasn't many per set, that it almost made them mythical and super special. And, and like, almost like no one would believe you got the thing that you got, alright? So this Secret Rare, uh... It's it's quite marvelous. I almost can't believe I'm holding it in my hands without a sleeve. I'll do this for you guys. Just because I know with the sleeve on, there's way less chances that you guys will see the attention to detail. Uh, if you weren't looking closely, this would look like just a normal Pikachu. So I'm really hoping the camera picks this up. Uh, this was during the black and white era. And this Pikachu card, um, black and white base set, actually. So, first thing you can notice is that the, the energy symbols all are textured and hollow. There's also a textured and hollow lightning bolt in the attack area of the card. Also, within the picture frame... Pikachu is textured and hollow, and even the set symbol way at the bottom is textured and hollow. This card is magnificent. It's so beautiful, and I love that it's subtle, yet so immaculate. This is just incredible, and it's like a subtle beauty. And again, there wasn't many secret rares in these uh, sets, even black and white being not that long ago. Um, secret rares were something very special, uh, where there was fewer and farther between each one. Um, so they really did it nicely. Um, and I would say like this one's condition, um, it's so close to near mint. I do see some tiny, tiny face scratches. Uh, on it like very tiny um, that I would still call it near mint and I'm so happy to have this card uh, in such a great condition beautiful beautiful card I would actually have to say that this is yeah this is my 
most favorite non evolution non umbreon card in my whole personal collection this card right here however it's time for the big reveal of what was the very first ever secret rare ever printed all right are you guys ready if you know pause the video write in the comments what was the very first ever secret rare card and then resume and see if you got it right all right you could even just write the pokemon bonus points if you get the perfect card text double bonus points if you get the collector number all right pause the video write it down all right and then come back to the video hit play the very first ever secret rare was dark raichu from the team rocket set this was our introduction to secret rares quite a beautiful card i'm so happy to be sharing this with you guys today this one came from professor cedar's vault just like the secret rare pikachu from black and white base set just like the reverse hollow EV, the Umbreon Prime, but it all came down to this dark Raichu. And I'm so happy to have shown it to you. The first ever secret rare Pokemon card. And now that we've gone through this entire journey, uh, I did want to give you a bit of a sneak peek and some insight because I know many people have this question. So if you'll join me over on the computer, we're going to go into a little bit about how to research cards and values. Uh, that's just a little bonus I want to throw in. Um, and then we'll follow up next lesson is going to be all about how to price check and value your cards based on the secondary market value. All right, guys? Join me over there. Okay, Pokemon Masters, here we are in front of our computer. Uh, keep in mind, you may also be able to just use your smartphone. Uh, any internet device works for this exercise all right and a couple things i want to say before i get started first and foremost this is not financial advice when you're valuing your pokemon cards use it as a tool or a resource to better find um, how to care for your cards or which cards to put more emphasis on in your collection etc but pokemon cards are just that they are Pokemon cards. They're pieces of cardboard for us to enjoy and love. Um, and with that out of the way, um, I do also want to mention that value is subjective and it's not objective. There's no set in stone value. You have to decide how much or how little you value a card. Um, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to say before we get into this is all I'm going to be doing is showing you a very quick example of how I might find the, a starting point to figuring out the value of a card. All right. Uh, we're going to go into full detail. We'll do a full feature video all about valuing cards in the future. Okay. So here we go. I have in my hands a... Mewtwo Gold Star. This is from the set called EX Hall on Phantoms. And um, I don't know where to start. So here's where I go if I don't know where to start. The very first thing is I know this is a vintage card. So I can find the collector number on the bottom right hand corner of the card all right so bottom right hand corner i focus my glasses lenses here 
All right, 103 slash 110. So now I have the collector number. What do I do with that information? Well, I go straight to a website called trollandtoad.com. Now, some of you seasoned collectors might be surprised and shocked, but Professor Cedar is a man of convenience. And uh, I'll show you a few things. So first of all, if I type in the word Mewtwo into trollandtoad.com, I'm just gonna get a big list of cards. All right, so when I go to trollandtoad.com, instead, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. What did I see there? Oh, it's so pretty. Let's see again. Oh, wow. Perfection. All right, anyways, uh, in Troll and Toad, uh, I'm gonna go to that search bar and I'm gonna write the collector number I have there. And by typing in the collector number, my card comes straight to the top of the list, all right? Also, that being said, you don't need to know, like, let's say you're a parent and you're helping moderate or decide which cards to set aside for your, your child. You don't need to know the name of the Pokemon. You don't need to know Mewtwo's history and that he's a clone of Mew and blah, 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 blah. All you need to know is the collector number. It's on the bottom right or the bottom left. And if you want to further know, know more things about the specific card, well, once you've gone in trollandtoad.com and you've typed in the collector number, we can now see that the name of the star is in fact Mewtwo. It's got a gold star on it. It has the collector number we typed in and its rarity is ultra rare, but it'll even go as far as tell us the set EX Holland Found Phantoms. And if we wanted to know more about that set, we could click on that set. Um, but it also gives us a little bit of a listing. So if we wanted, we could just buy that card straight off Troll and Toad. Their copy that they have in stock is moderately played, which is actually better than the one I own. The one I own is folded in half. It's creased. Um, but anyways, so their moderately played one is 714. There's your starting point. All right. So, um, I already know that a lot of people are probably going to comment and, and be frustrated with me if I don't give you at least a little bit more information about pricing cards. So, I will just tell you about some other sites here. I'll explain what's uh, medium, good, or bad of, about each one, but very briefly. Again, I plan on going into full detail and possibly even ranking them. All right, so here we go. The next website is, uh, first of all, I'm going to just preload my clipboard. So what does that mean? I'm going to control C or right click and go copy. If you're on an Apple phone, I'm not exactly sure how to copy. I, I don't use Apple, but if you're on an Android, you can long press the name and then make sure you click copy link text. Anyways, um, go into eBay and eBay also once you have that preloaded uh, clipboard you can just paste it in and you can see some listings my one quick tip for eBay is make sure that you go into your filters and click on sold listings after all anyone can list anything for any price but only when someone's willing to pay for it that's when we know its value all right so here we go uh, things to note is uh, this one here it has a lower price but it is creased so that's something to keep in mind oopsies uh, yeah creased so that was that one and then so that one's closer to the condition of of my card uh, but then some near mint ones 1096 1218 all right okay next we have price charting all right so I just once again want to show 103 slash 110. If we go into price charting, which is a, a very reputable source for any pricing information when it comes to collectibles, uh, video games, trading cards, price charting is one of my top go-tos for price checking stuff. But anyways, if I do this and I hit go, um, nothing comes up. But now if instead I paste in the troll and toad listing, 
stuff comes up and I have my listing found and there we go. We can click on it and see more information. Uh, and then finally, once again, um, my least favorite, but here it is, TCG player. Uh, it's more universal. Lots of people use it. Um, again, I'm a big fan of convenience, so I like trollandtoad.com. <laughs> it's faster to do stuff. But if I, once again, try 103 out of 110, uh, nothing comes up. And then if I hit search, it'll even show me, like, cards that aren't even related to that collector. Like, I'm seeing 103 here, but that's not out of 110. Come on, like, even if I go to the bottom of the first page, there is no 103 out of 110 here. Like, what is going on? Anyways, I'm going to paste in my card and that'll usually do the trick and we can click on the card and again see more information about the card's value. Um, one little thing I like to mention about TCG player is never go off the the listing price that you see right in the front, right? Um, like it even says here nine listings from 103 uh, but then when you click on it there's only one listing and it's for 1500. Um, so that's sort of the things to look out for. But anyways, um, there's some starting points for you guys. I will go into more detail on everything. Again, I just want to say very important to me is that Pokemon cards are not about money. Sure, it's nice to have valuable cards, but what's even nicer is cherishing and loving the cards that we grew up with and really enjoying the collection enjoying the battles after all battling encourages math reading critical thinking and social skills with the youngsters so like there's so much more to it than just uh, i have valuable cardboard yeah it's not about that to me um it's all about really enjoying what you enjoy after all it's a hobby and if you know, your hobby happens to be flying drones. That's amazing. If your hobby happens to be brewing tea, uh, that's amazing. If your hobby happens to be other card games, that's amazing. I love encouraging people to have a hobby and enjoy it. And don't always make everything about money. Just enjoy what you're doing. All right. Um, pricing cards is simply a tool to ensure some fair trading perhaps, but also maybe sorting the collection and knowing um, which cards to take better care of and which ones to leave at home. But beyond that, sitting there price checking your cards over and over and over and over and over again, that's just gonna give you a headache, all right? So use it as a tool, but don't give yourself a headache. And that said, Catch you again! And that wraps up today's adventure. I hope you discovered something new and had as much fun as I did. Remember, everything we discussed today is meant to spark your curiosity and bring us together in the Pokemon community. If you enjoyed our journey, please like this video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to never miss out on our upcoming adventures. Your support means the world to me and helps me bring more Pokemon mysteries to light. Don't forget to check out the description for useful links and resources. And as always, keep on training and exploring. Catch you again!